Hello again everyone and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to build an Nginx proxy. Now Nginx itself has all kinds of awesome features. You can use it as a simple web server, a load balancer, or like we're going to do in this video, a proxy. And there's all kinds of different reasons on why you might want to create a proxy with Nginx, but typically it allows you to have something on the public end in front of an internal server that you don't want to have direct access to the public internet. And of course, you could use things like Let's Encrypt. You could go ahead and encrypt an application with SSL that normally doesn't have the ability to do so. But I'll leave it up to you as far as why you might want to do that. In today's video, what we're gonna do is create a Node.js app and we're going to put an Nginx proxy in front of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, what I've done off camera is I've created a brand new Linode. I called it Nginx Tutorial. And we are going to use this as the example Linode for this video. So I'm going to copy the IP address to the clipboard. And as usual, we will use SSH to connect to it. Paste in the IP address. Type in my super secret password. And now I'm connected. So let's go ahead and get Nginx installed. So for this tutorial, I am going to be installing the mainline Nginx, which is going to require the installation of a key and an extra repository. So I'll paste in the appropriate command right here to download the key. So basically, I am just using wget to download the key right from the Nginx website. And now, as you can see, we have the Nginx signing key downloaded to our Linode. And now that we have the key, let's go ahead and install it. So for that, I will type apt hyphen key, add, and then the file that we've just downloaded, I'll press enter. So now that we have the key on our Linode, we can add the repository. So for that, I'll use nano, basically a text editor, to edit slash Etsy, apt sources.list.d, nginx.list, just like that. And here I've pasted in the line that we need for this repository to be added. Now pay special attention to the word in red right here where it says Focal. And that is the code name for the Ubuntu 2004 release. It's codenamed the Focal Fossa. So if you are using a different distribution with a different code name, you'll want to make sure that you change it accordingly. But if you are following along with me and running on Ubuntu 2004, then this should work just fine. So I'll save the file. I'll hold Control and press O. That'll bring up the save dialog. I'll press enter to save the file. And then control X to exit out of the editor. Now that we have the new repository file, we need to update the repository index for apt. And to do that, we will run apt update and then press enter. And as long as you have no errors, you should be good to go. I see no errors on my end. So next we can actually install Nginx. And for that, it's apt install Nginx. Simple enough, I'll press enter. And now we have Nginx installed. We'll want to make sure that it's actually running. So what we can do is type systemctl status Nginx. I'll press enter. And as you can see, it is not running. It's inactive as it shows right here. And it's actually enabled, which is great because that means that it will start when our Linode starts. So if I was to reboot the Linode, then that means Nginx would come right up. I'll press Q to exit out. So since Nginx is not running, as I mentioned, it's inactive, we can go ahead and start it up. So for that, systemctl start Nginx. And then if we check the status again, we can see that it is now active and running and if it doesn't show enabled on your end, then you can simply run systemctl enable and then nginx. And that'll make sure that this service is enabled and will start up when your Linode reboots. So now that we have nginx installed, we can make sure that we can actually reach it from the internet. So back on the dashboard, I'll copy the IP address just to make sure that that's what I have in my clipboard. And then in a new tab, I'll paste it in right here and press enter. And it says, welcome to Nginx. So what that means is that Nginx is working. It's installed and it's ready to go. 
Now, of course, we'll want to configure Nginx, and the nature of today's video is we are going to set up a reverse proxy, but already we can see that Nginx is working and available from the public internet. That's pretty cool. So, in order to set up a reverse proxy, you'll need to have an application running that we can proxy to. Off camera, I set up an Express app in Node.js, which is running on port 3000, but this can be anything from a Docker container to a Snap package, a Java application, or even another web host. And what I'm going to do is change directory into the Etsy nginx conf.d directory. And as you can see, we have a default.conf file right here. So I'm going to create a new one. I will just use nano. I will call it nodeapp.conf, just like that. And then here I will paste in the code for this configuration file, which looks something like this. Now, what you'll want to do is this line right here, where it says server underscore name and then example.com, you will want to replace example.com with your actual domain name or the IP address of your Linode. So since I don't have a domain set up for this particular Linode, I'll just erase all this right here and then paste in the IP address. And that's basically it. That's all we need to do to set up a reverse proxy. Now, where the magic happens is this block where it begins with location and then slash. We have the proxy pass directive, which is basically proxying traffic to localhost colon 3000. And the proxy pass directive itself is what allows Nginx to function as a proxy. So what I'll do is save the file, control O, enter, and then control X. And then next, we need to take care of the default.conf file. And what we can do is simply move it to a new name so that Nginx can't find it. So I'll just type MV for move. We'll move the default file. And we will move it to the same name dot disabled. Press enter. And then we can actually test the configuration with this command right here, nginx t. I'll press enter. And awesome, it's telling me that the syntax is okay and the test is successful. And now we should be able to reload nginx with nginx s and then reload. That'll reload the nginx configuration. So now I will go back to where I created the application. And inside that directory, I will run node and then the app.js file. You can see that it is listening on port 3000. Now here on the dashboard, I'll grab the IP address, I'll paste it in, and we should be able to go ahead and press enter right here because we're not going to tell it to go to port 3000 because if Nginx is working properly, then the standard port 80 should actually proxy us to port 3000, which means that this is working. Let's see if it is. And well, would you look at that? It says, hello world, right there. And that's coming directly from our Node.js app that Nginx is basically proxying us to, which is awesome. So now this app is accessible from the public internet. So with this, you can go ahead and develop your own Node.js app and run it on your Linode and expose it to the public internet through the proxy. Now, one of the main advantages here is that you can use Let's Encrypt's cert bot to create an SSL certificate to secure your Linode. That's beyond the scope of this video. We already have a video on the channel that shows you how to do that. But now that you have an Nginx proxy, you can now set up a Let's Encrypt certificate on your app that'll help it be more secure. And that's all there is to it. Nginx is awesome. Setting up a proxy in front of an application is just one of many use cases that Nginx can handle for you and a proxy is definitely a useful thing to have. As you just saw, we were able to put a proxy in front of a Node.js app, and that's pretty cool. But I'll leave it up to you as far as what you might want to put Nginx in front of as a proxy. There's all kinds of different use cases out there, and Nginx is very flexible, and I'm sure it'll facilitate your needs. And I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, make sure you click that like button and that subscribe button. We have more content coming very soon, so stay tuned.